a description was passed down from the first human civilization of Mesopotamia, of the first mountain ever to receive a name, Mount Mashu. After traveling through the darkness of a tunnel through the mountain, one man found an entrance to a bountiful, green, subterranean garden. That was only the first clue that the planet Earth is either partially or entirely hollow. Numerous locations for entrances to the hollow earth have been documented. Paris, France. Staffordshire, England. Montreal, Canada. Hangzhou, China. And the Amazon rainforest. The elders of the Hopi Indians are forbidden to reveal the entrance hidden in the Grand Canyon, which leads to the inside world. Of course, the most widely known openings are at the North and South Poles. It was the 8th Earl of Clancarty who first recognized the only way all icebergs could be composed of frozen fresh water was if there were rivers flowing from the inside of the world to the outside. Edmund Haley, the English astronomer who computed the 76-year orbit of Haley's Comet, also figured the Earth is made up of a hollow shell, 500 miles thick, with more concentric shells inside, separated by a luminous atmosphere. Escaping gas causes the aurora borealis. Inventor of the calculus, Leonard Euler, the eminent mathematician, calculated against the idea of multiple shells and in favor of a centrally located interior sun, providing light to advanced civilizations living on the inner surface of the Earth. In 1913, a full explanation of the formation of hollow planets was published by Marshall Gardner of Illinois. One year before the release of his treatise, he registered a United States patent on a working model of the hollow Earth, complete with interior sun, represented by a light bulb. The Pulp Magazine Amazing Stories ran a series of factual articles between 1945 and 49, in which it was disclosed that a superior prehistoric race once lived under the crust of our planet, and their descendants live there still. Thousands of readers posted letters to the editor affirming that they had, indeed, been able to hear voices from inside the Earth. Jean Leclerc Milfort fought in the American Revolution. He was caught in a duel at the court of Louis XVI in France, and having killed a servant in the king's household, was forced to emigrate to America. On the side of the British, he led into battle a contingent of Creek Indians. Near the end of the war, when the Indians wished to return home, he further led them to present-day Louisiana, where the Creek Nation allowed him access to an enormous tribal domain underground, which he estimated could easily contain 20,000 families. The Hindus believe in Petela, a subterranean heaven. Petela is filled with splendid jewels and beautiful groves of trees. A sweet fragrance fills the air 
and sweet music can be perceived at the threshold of hearing. There is no sunlight in the lower realm, but the darkness is dissipated by the shining of the jewels. Underground riches are also represented in the beliefs of Tibetan Buddhist monks. An endless cavern is filled with ancient machinery, the majority of which has not been used in thousands of years. The writer Lobsang Rampa describes the activation of one such machine beneath the Himalayan mountains, which illuminates the ghosts who walk among the living. Their molecules, after departing this world, are so widely dispersed that a ghost can walk through walls without coming in contact with the atomic structure of the wall itself. A monument stands in Hamilton, Ohio to John Cleve Sims, who proposed an expedition to the entrance to the planet at the North Pole. U.S. President John Quincy Adams offered the financial support of the government for this effort. But the next president, Andrew Jackson, cut funding for the expedition. The renowned spiritualist Lady Paget predicted that the entrance to the underground kingdom will be found in this century after the year 2017.